वेलकम टू पार्ट थ्री ऑफ एडब्ल्यू सोल्यूशन आर्किटेक्ट एसोसिएट वीडियो इट्स ऑलवेज वाइज टू लर्न फ्रॉम अपडेटेड कंटेंट रेदर दैन स्टील और आउटडेटेड कंटेंट बिकॉज लर्निंग फ्रॉम आउटडेटेड कंटेंट कैन पुट योर रिस्क ऑफ passing the exam because day by day the syllabus is changing if you miss question number 1 to 20 please check my previous parts on this series so let's begin or we'll mark the keywords just like me in real world exam let's look at option c first there's a thin line of difference between highly accessible and high ability creating new volumes in additional regions will contribute to high ability and not highly accessible this in turn may result in increase in cost unnecessarily hence an incorrect choice will reject this let's now look at option b glacier deep archive will not return the documents instantly as per the need of the question right therefore this option is definitely out let's now look at option d that is it uses intelligent turing intelligent turing is used for unpredictable or changing access pattern as per the question we already know that the documents need to be written instantly as mentioned here therefore we don't need intelligent turing s3 standard is perfect fit for this scenario hence we'll reject this and lock option a since it contains s3 standard all right this question is related to placement of ec2 instances you got to be familiar about the concepts let's first look at option c and d together that is one uses single ability zone and other uses multiple ability zone whether you are implementing auto scaling within a single ability zone or multiple ability zone it will not help in achieving low latency though deploying instances across multiple ability zone can contribute to high ability hence this is an incorrect choice because we don't need high ability as per the question let's now look at option a do network load balancer can achieve low latency as mentioned in this keyword but the problem is there is no mention of tcp udp traffic or even http traffic in the question that being said we simply can't assume that there will be tcp or udp traffic based because network load balancer works on tcp or udp traffic hence this is again an incorrect choice and quick tip for the exam if you want to achieve low latency or support hpc workload then cluster placement group should strike in your mind hence we we'll lock b as the correct answer all right we have some interesting question let's now look at option b first that is s3 standard if we use s3 standard then we will end up paying more for the files which are infrequently viewed hence This is an incorrect choice. Let's now look at option C that is Glacier Deep Archive. If we we use S3 Glacier Deep Archive, then files which are routinely visited or routinely accessed as mentioned here will take longer time for retrieval and will also cost more during fetching. Therefore this is again an incorrect choice we'll reject this. Now let's look at the last option or option D that is S3 standard IA infrequent access also known as S3 standard infrequent access is a balance between frequently visited files and infrequently visited files but the problem is that files which are viewed in an unexpected manner cannot be optimized using S3 standard infrequent access we need instead S3 intelligent tiering for such scenario this brings us to the answer and if you look at the official documentation as well it's clearly mentioned that s3 intelligent tiering is only cloud storage class that delivers automatic storage and cost savings when data access patterns change s3 standard tiering is idle storage for data with unknown this is what we required and changing also unpredictable access these were the keywords right and patterns independent of the object size or retention trait that's what is required and hence we we'll lock a as the correct answer okay we got an interesting question let's first look at option b that is use amazon ec2 instances to migrate and work on database servers this seems to be the worst option because there is no mention of how the migration will proceed and what steps should we take seems absurd option we'll reject this let's now look at option a option a uses aurora aurora supports only postgresql and mysql not oracle as mentioned here therefore it's an incorrect choice let's now look at option c that is uses it dynamo db and he has also mentioned that without modifying the application code if we use dynamo db which is a no sql database 
we need to change the code right therefore this is again an incorrect choice and we'll lock d as the correct answer all right this question is related to broadcasting and it's related to news reporting seems very real life question let's look at option a first that is direct connect there's no mention of on-prem to aws connectivity direct connect is totally off topic in this regard this option is therefore easy to eliminate let's now look at option b that is it uses elastic ip addresses seems interesting elastic ip addresses are used to mask failure of an instance as per the scenario we don't need to mask the failure of anything right seems just a distractor let's reject this let's now look at option c that is cloudfront cloudfront works on layer 7 of osi model which is the http layer cloudfront cannot be used for layer 4 or tcp or udp as mentioned here therefore it's an incorrect choice we arrive at the answer that global accelerator is suitable for such scenario also quick tip for the exam aws global accelerator works for both http as well as tcp or udp protocols therefore it's a perfect fit and if you look at the official documentation as well it's written that for real-time communication these seasons could be for voice instant messaging or live video that is used aws global accelerator is a service that helps reduce network latency and jitters and also global accelerator improves the ability and performance of application for local or global users this we all know and hence we'll log d as the correct answer all right this question is related to databases let's first look at option a that is amazon aurora multi az mysql compatible since we need high ability multi az deployment can help also since mysql is a relational database this option seems to be a perfect fit we'll keep this because we need two correct answer let's still look at option b that is amazon dynamo db first of all dynamo db is a no sql database secondly there's no mention that global tables are active therefore it's an incorrect choice let's now look at option c and d together because both uses rds in some way but the difference is that one uses multi az other uses in the single ability zone perhaps option d seems to be a better fit than option c as it incorporates multi az deployment for fault tolerance and high ability hence we will reject option c and lock a and d as the correct answer this seems to be interesting question and it's related to s3 let's look at option c first that is make the s3 bucket as public if you make the bucket as public probably you will lose your job because you need to provide access to certain users and not to the entire world seems easy to eliminate option let's now look at option b that is use aws kms to encrypt the files and provide user the keys interesting well there is no need to encrypt the files and provide user the keys providing keys to the users doesn't come under best practices because if somehow the keys are compromised then the access to the bucket will also be compromised which certainly we don't want right and we can instead lose our job as well so let's reject this let's now look at option a that is uses create and assign am roles creation of am roles and users is not required because we need to provide limited time access to the users and not permanent access as mentioned here in the question also creation of IAM users and roles finally removing them requires a lot of manual work which is indeed a tedious task right therefore it's not the best solution we'll reject this it's written that object owners can optionally create share objects with others by creating a pre-signed url this one is required using their own security credential to grant time limited permission to download the objects hence we'll lock d as the correct answer all right this question seems interesting and it's related to gaming let's first look at option a that is it uses application load balancer we know that application load balancer works on layer 7 which is the http layer it cannot work on udp layer as required as per the question of the osi model hence this is an incorrect choice let's now look at option b that is uses route 53 along with amazon aurora serverless there is no need for dns service like route 53 first of all also aurora is a relational database we need non-relational database to store non-relational data as mentioned here 
as per the question. Therefore, it's again an incorrect choice. Let's now look at option C and the reason goes same for this again because it uses Aurora and we need a non-relational database as per the question. This is again an incorrect choice. Since network load balancer works on TCP or UDP protocol and also DynamoDB is a non-relational database, therefore this architecture is a best fit for this scenario and hence we can lock option D as the correct answer. The concept to answer this question is that the more close your EC2 instances are, the higher throughput and low latency it will yield. Now let's dive into the options now. Let's begin with options A and B that is one uses two different regions and other uses three different ability zones. Launching in different regions and ability zones will increase high ability. It will result in high latency instead because EC2 instances are located miles apart. Therefore, incorrect choice as per the question's requirement. Let's now look at option D that is it uses spread placement group. Though in spread placement group, the instances are located in the same ability zone, but it's designed to minimize hardware failures as instances are spread out. This will not result in low latency again as required as per the question. We'll reject this. As a clear description of the three types of placement group, cluster, partition, spread, you got to read this out. But in the interest of time, let's dive into the answer that is this strategy enables workloads to achieve the low latency network performance. This was required low latency for tightly coupled node to node communication that is typical for HPC application. You got to remember this that for HPC applications, cluster works well. So in the interest of time, we'll lock C as the correct answer. Okay, seems very interesting question. Let's first look at option A that is AWS storage gateway. There's no mention of on-premises in the question. Also storage gateway can't be used to store petabytes of data as mentioned here. Therefore, an incorrect choice. Let's now look at option B that is uses Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive. If we use S3 Glacier Deep Archive, then we'll be doomed, right? This will increase the time users spend waiting for the drawings to load, which certainly we don't want because we need to decrease the user's time spent waiting, right? Hence, we'll reject this. Let's now look at option C and D together. One uses EBS volumes and other uses S3. Between EBS volume and S3, S3 represents a better architecture, especially if we want to store data on a petabyte scale as mentioned here in the question. Therefore, we'll reject option C and log D as the correct answer. So please, please, please don't go away. Let's meet in part four of this series and please support this channel by becoming a member by clicking the join button below because lot of hard work and also the certifications which I'm teaching, I myself is certified which requires lot of money as well from my side. So please keep supporting. 